The dream, an energy source that does not end and doesn't damage the planet. Renewables. However, what most people don't know is that in Europe, most renewables come from organic sources, such as wood, crops or organic waste, known as biomass. Here, European institutions and national governments set the rules for the production of renewables. The consequences? You have to see it to believe it. The journey begins in Italy, which, burning through 3 million tonnes per year, is the world's largest consumer of wood pellets for heating. The Sardinian pellet saga began in 2011, when the Regional Forestry Authority decided to promote the use of wood for energy, authorising a pilot logging project in the state-owned forest of Marganai. Marganai is one of the largest home oak forests in the Mediterranean. The forest was declared a Natura 2000 site by the EU in the 90s. The man who will turn the forest into gold is local entrepreneur Giuseppe Vargiu, who is well connected to local politics. He's thinking big, so he built his first pellet mill to produce four to six thousand tons per year of genuine Sardinian pellets. La conseguenza che cos'è? Che noi abbiamo i nostri boschi sporchi, non fruibili eh, a livello turistico, ad alto rischio incendio, ok? Noi lì abbiamo vinto una gara, poi la legna io ne faccio di quello che voglio, ah, perché certo. ho vinto un'asta, eccetera, eccetera. We enter the forest with our two guides, Francesco Aru, the environmental expert who drew up the plan that turned Marganai into a protected area, and local blogger Pablo Sol. The first thing Aru shows us with pride is the thick, dense peat soil of the forest, rich with organic matter and carbon. And finally, here it is, the logged area. Varju's men did not just take away old, dead branches. Some of these trees had diameters bigger than one meter. Here, Soil erosion is disastrous. Without the forest canopy, the rich carpet that covered the limestone is gone. In places, the terrain seems bombed. And then, the silence. No trees, no birds. Thrushes, blackbirds and pigeons that used to migrate over the forest are in decline, and even a rare pair of goshawks disappeared after the cuts. Non coltivo certezze in genere, eh? Io coltivo dubbi, non certezze. Eh, anche io. Però non ho proprio questa certezza che questo intervento sia stato, uh, come viene detto addirittura, nefasto. Nefasto è una The forestry agency boasts that their real ambition is not only to expand the project to all state-owned forests, but also to get private forest owners who control the other 50% of Sardinia's forests to cut down trees for energy. And what if the consequences of this ill-conceived and counterproductive approach to renewables had effects that went well beyond the borders of Sardinia? This pellet plant on the European border of Russia, in Viborg, is the biggest single pellet producer in Europe. One quarter of the world's forests are here, in Mother Russia. We have the largest factory that produces pressed biomass for European biomass generation. This is uh, the largest one in the world. They produce it from uh, just uh, garbage that is not used by uh, furniture production or by other more value-added sectors. Trucks loaded with massive logs this beautiful wood must be headed for some furniture plant in the region. A very large furniture plant. Just garbage wood, they say. Yet rows upon rows of stored logs stand in lines that must be two kilometers long. Here, pellets are made from whole trunks, 
not wood residue. These trees will be shredded and pressed into pellets here and legally burnt in Europe as supposed clean and renewable energy. The problem is, again, in the energy policies. The EU's renewable energy policy sets the targets for renewables and bioenergy, but does not impose safeguards for how to meet the targets. Brussels says, use biomass, and national governments end up trashing and burning forests. And while Brussels ponders the issue, the Kremlin has spotted the opportunity. A new player, Russian Wood Pellets, just announced its intention to build a number of mega mills, three times the size of the gigantic Viborg plant we've just seen. The entire production from this Viborg pellet plant is exported to the European Union by a few companies. So Russian pellets make their way into the burners of European energy giants like Belgian Electrobel or Danish Dong by a number of brokers. So again, because of ill-conceived laws about renewable energy, taxpayers are actually subsidizing the destruction of forests. The paradox? They're doing it to save the planet. But there is other, less obvious damage being inflicted on nature in the name of renewables. It's a disaster happening in farmland. Romania is a perfect example of how well-intended renewable energy policies can negatively impact an agricultural economy. With a strong farming tradition and a national desire for energy independence, Romania quickly became a friendly place for the production of biofuels. I think that the biofuel policy, the European biofuel policy is super. The Romania has a huge potential for biofuel production. Everything we have done was supported by the European Union grant. The problem we have uh, is to increase the use of biofuel in uh, Romania. But not everyone seems to agree with Professor Tudoriano. We're using the land to grow fuel instead of growing food. And uh, in Romania that's a big problem because normally you would have capacity to grow food for 80 million people. Instead, we're importing almost 80% of our food. Since 2007, biofuels have boomed in Romania. They've entered everyday life. But far from being a Romanian success story, it resembles, at closer look, a typical case of land grabbing. Here, Interagro owns everything. Hotels, docks, a ferry, and of course, the land. The impact a biofuel plant this size has on its surroundings is immense. The stark contrast with the unaltered natural landscape just across the Danube on the Bulgarian side is astonishing. The landscape has changed completely. Almost every corner of available land has been ploughed and sprayed with pesticides. A small patch of natural forest is a striking reminder of how alive this place once was. natural biodiversity has been lost to a barren landscape of biofuel production. After another sea of monocultures, here's one of the largest biogas plants in the world, one of several belonging to Nawaro Bioenergy. This ravenous monster needs more than 1,000 tonnes of corn every day, the same as 4 million people. The impact that a plant this size has on its surroundings is enormous and has left small-scale farmers struggling to keep up. 
we have this farm since 1969. The land cost has changed. It's very, very expensive. They are not living on, on the land and they are not farming. They only use it to, to put in their money. Energy producers have bought, in the last 10 years, 15 to 30 percent of the available land in some areas. In just six years, land prices have gone up 55 percent. Grazing land has become a luxury because of the competition corn represents. For the first time in 25 years, Germany, a big producer of corn, has become a net importer. The point is that it looks like life, but in fact, it's just an industrial scale factory of plants. In an eerie silence, we look for a sign of life. Nothing. You do not have to go very far to see what this place once looked like. The fields actually border a national park. And here, life resists. We saw many former valuable grassland sites which have been um, ploughed up and converted to um, monoculture of maize production. And this leads to a, a broad loss of uh, grassland birds which used to breed on these um, grassland sites. Official data shows that between 2004 and 2010 alone, in large parts of Bavaria, some 90% of grasslands were lost, often to cornfields. Of course, we need uh, renewable energy. Um, but to be honest, bioenergy is a very tiny part of the future. We have to focus on wind and solar. This is a big challenge how to make um, agriculture policy and how to make food production sustainable and ecologically viable in the long term. So things can go wrong, very wrong, even in a leading country that aspires for clean energy and where rules are applied. Now we move on to a territory dominated by small and medium-sized producers of high-quality agriculture who were turned into energy producers by subsidies. In Italy, Lombardy has the highest number of plants and Cremona is the leading province with 137 plants, or one every 12 square kilometers. The domes cover digesters, in which cereals are mixed with cattle excrement and fermented. The gas produced is up to 70% methane and is burnt in a small generator where the energy is channeled into the grid. We have a company of vacchio da latte for the production of grana padano. Adesso tutto il liquame della stalla e il letame viene inserito nel digestore per produrre appunto biogas. Prima ehm, avevamo soprattutto erba medica e adesso invece utilizziamo il mais e un secondo raccolto di triticale per sia l'alimentazione delle vacche sia l'alimentazione del, dell'impianto di biogas. Federico and his family produce electricity and sell it to the National Power Authority at a subsidized price, a multiple of the market price fixed for 15 years, the best of all worlds, or so it seems. Il mercato dei cereali con l'arrivo degli impianti a biomassa è cambiato nel senso che da una parte si è avuto una estensione di queste produzioni che hanno cambiato il paesaggio rurale, hanno cambiato anche i prezzi degli affitti per quanto riguarda i terreni agricoli, con conseguenze gravi per quanto riguarda le aziende zootecniche. È l'ultima cosa a cui si pensa, quindi se fino a 10 anni fa si poteva pensare di lasciare alcuni terreni a riposo a vantaggio della natura, eh, delle specie animali e vegetali, al giorno d'oggi questa cosa è molto complicata. La natura in certe zone, nelle pianure intensive, soprattutto del nord d'Italia, semplicemente non, non ha spazio, non ha posto, non sa dove stare fisicamente. 
eh, andando a vedere l'indicatore calcolato solo sulle, con i dati presi nelle pianure intensive, vediamo che questo indicatore invece cala del 42%, cioè dal 2000 ad oggi le popolazioni degli uccelli che vivono in quelle zone sono quasi dimezzate. Of course, renewable energy is the future, but it must not come at the expense of nature. We cannot replace one finite source of energy, oil and coal, with another finite one, trees and crops. You cannot save life on Earth by destroying it. There is nothing renewable about driving species to extinction to heat our homes. And yes, What you do in one place, Europe for example, does affect everyone. We have to ensure that as we strive to protect our planet, we don't unintentionally destroy it.